Let's clear up one common misconception from the get-go. Self-care is not synonymous with self-indulgence or being selfish. Self-care means taking care of yourself so that you can be healthy, you can be well, can do your job, can help and care for others, and can do all the things you need to and want to accomplish in a day. In today's video, we will be talking about why self-care is important. Without further ado, let's begin. If you think you've been hearing more about self-care now, you're right. One indicator. According to Google Trends, the number of searches for self-care has more than doubled since 2015. Self-care is part of the answer to how we can all better cope with daily stressors, explains Kelsey Petal, a Los Angeles-based wellness expert and the author of the forthcoming book Burning Bright, Rituals, Reiki, and Self-Care to Heal Burnout, Anxiety, and Stress. It's work stress. It's the stress of trying to keep up with the pace of daily life, which technology has hastened more than ever. Just think how many emails come flooding into your inbox each day. People are feeling lonelier and less able to unwind and slow down, which makes them feel more anxious and overwhelmed by even the simplest tasks, Paddle says. What is self-care and why is it critical for your well-being? Several organizations and researchers take a health-oriented approach when defining self-care. The World Health Organization defines self-care as the ability of individuals, families, and communities to promote health, prevent disease, maintain health, and to cope with illness and disability with or without the support of a healthcare provider. Self-care includes everything related to staying physically healthy, including hygiene, nutrition, and seeking medical care when needed. It's all the steps an individual can take to manage stressors in his or her life and take care of his or her own health and well-being. What is self-care? What are the benefits of practicing self-care? Self-care is anything you do to take care of yourself so you can stay physically, mentally, and emotionally well. Its benefits are better physical, mental, and emotional health and well-being. Research suggests self-care promotes positive health outcomes, such as fostering resilience, living longer, and becoming better equipped to manage stress. Can self-care help prevent disease or illness? What are some examples of self-care? How do I start a self-care routine? Some researchers have adopted a similarly clinical approach. A 2010 study published in JBI Library of Systematic Reviews defined self-care as the set of activities in which one engages throughout life on a daily basis, focusing on promoting health, preventing illness, and managing issues that come up right up arrow. A study published in BMC Palliative Care in April 2018 took self-care to mean the self-initiated behavior that people choose to incorporate to promote good health and general well-being. The study authors added that it's about being healthy, but also about incorporating coping strategies to deal with work stressors. In 2019, researchers published a self-care framework in the BMJ to specifically point out that in addition to self-care being the activities individuals do on their own to promote physical and emotional health, it also includes the ways that individuals interact with clinicians and healthcare systems to tend to physical and emotional health. That means self-care includes things like getting a vaccine, scheduling cancer screenings, or taking prescription medications on schedule. But healthcare providers and organizations play a role, too, in how well individuals engage in these self-care practices. In other words, there are a lot of people and factors that bear on any one individual's ability to engage in self-care right up arrow. As self-care has become more mainstream, the definitions have started to become more applicable to the general public and tend to focus on tuning into one's needs and meeting those needs. Self-care is anything that you do for yourself that feels nourishing, says Marnie Amselm, PhD, a licensed psychologist based in Trumbull, Connecticut. That can be something that's relaxing or calming, or it can be something that is intellectual or spiritual or physical or practical, or something you need to get done, she says. The International Self-Care Foundation also includes health literacy as a pillar of self-care, meaning that any steps you take toward better understanding health information you need to make appropriate decisions about your health and well-being counts as self-care. This is why at Everyday Health, Self-care is all the steps you take to tend to your physical and emotional health in the ways you are best able to do so. Men's health and self-care
takes the spotlight this June as part of Men's Health Awareness Month. Self-care requires checking in with yourself and asking yourself how you're doing and what your body's asking for. Some people use it to deal with difficult news stories, others just to maintain their happiness day to day. Self-care does not mean the same thing for everyone. Different people will adopt different self-care practices, and even your own definition might change over time. What is self-care for one person will likely differ from someone else, and what's self-care for you one day might not feel like self-care another day. Dr. Amselin says, engaging in self-care regularly could help you put your best foot forward. When we are regularly taking care of ourselves, we are better able to react to the things that go on in our lives, Amselin says. It's something we do to maintain positive well-being. When self-care is regularly practiced, the benefits are broad and have even been linked to positive health outcomes such as reduced stress, improved immune system, increased productivity, and higher self-esteem, says Braided Courtney of Boston, a client leader at the Wellness Technology Company Wellable and a faculty member at the Wellness Council of America, types of self-care. It could be anything that floats your boat, anything that puts a smile on your face, Dr. Gil Loeb says, anything that makes you feel cared for, even if it's you caring for yourself. There are a few different categories of self-care. Emotional self-care, such as self-talk, weekly bubble baths, saying no to things that cause unnecessary stress, giving yourself permission to take a pause, or setting up a weekly coffee date with a friend. The underlining rule is that it's something that brings you more sustained joy in the long run, Courtney says. And though there are plenty of examples of self-care that seem to tread a fine line between a health-enhancing behavior and self-indulgence, self-care doesn't have to be about padding your calendar with luxurious experiences or activities that cost money, though it certainly can. Consider a manicure or a massage or any other pampering activity. It might seem indulgent, but if the activity helps you day stress and carve out time for yourself, it counts as self-care, Amselin says. If weekly manicures or monthly spa days are beyond your means, there are plenty of other self-care practices you can adopt. Self-care does not have to cost anything. It's just doing things you enjoy. And a lot of the things we enjoy or feel fulfilled from cost nothing, Amselin says. Stepping outside and taking a deep breath, for example, might be the greatest act of self-care. Even if you can't spend lots of time and money, Jill Lopes says you can still practice self-care several times a week by turning things you do every day into self-care practices. So guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I will see you in the next video.